Ramble. And your boyfriend's name is Chuck. Welcome wow. to Guilty Pleasures. Wow. We're three legally blondes over here. Well, <laughs> one natural, one artificial, one on the inside. I was born blonde. So was I. Dirty blonde. Some might say artificial blondes are actually more authentic blondes. Wow. I think in well, LA that's thank true. Thank you for having us. Totally. Uh, Zach Noe Towers joins whoop, the podcast whoop. today. Hey. Our blonde. Our, our <laughs> legally blonde. Our blonde bombshell. I'm so excited to be here. And, and also we, too. we were just chatting uh, just before the show and it turns out legally blonde means a lot to you apparently. <laughs> Does. We just invited you because invited you we like you. Yeah. Uh, but That was dumb. <laughs> That was really stupid. Uh, you should have invited me because of my I'm a historian of Legally Blonde. No, I was telling you guys before we started recording that the musical Legally Blonde, they did a, a Broadway like recording that they played on MTV when I was like a senior in college. Oh my god. And I had it on my like DVR and I'd watch it drunk like almost every night. Do you remember any of it? All of it. Wow. Frame by frame. The musical, for those listening, if you like Legally Blonde the musical, you love Legally Blonde the musical. It's incredible. You just said if you, if you like, like Legally Blonde, Blonde the musical, musical you, you love Legally Blonde, <laughs> Blonde the musical. And you know what? Blondest thing I'll say, but I stand by yeah. it. <laughs> okay, we're not going to get any of that either, but now Kelsey and Zach have switched chairs. It's the Zachs versus the Kelsey. Legally Blonde, the smash mega hit Reese Witherspoon's breakout role. Wow. Uh, this movie, you know, okay, I... Months and months ago, uh, I, I maybe it was over Thanksgiving, we watched it with Maggie's family, and it came on, and it, I didn't realize the extent to which it just was in me. Mm. Uh, this movie is iconic from first frame to last, yeah. and it's one of those movies that, uh, because of the aesthetics of it, the the you know the title, the pinkness of it, it it gets really derided as an unserious film and therefore mm. not good film. Ah. And, let, and let's be real, a, a female-coded film, right? Mm. Movies that are made for female audiences are very often derided as, oh, that's not serious, that's mm. a rom-com, that's whatever, mm. that's frivolous. Mm -hmm. This movie is excellent. Fantastic. Truly. And, and very well written, excellently act-performed. By all. Uh, it's by a quorum all. drama. Even Bruiser Woods. Mm. The dog. Who is probably long dead. Wait, yeah. Zach, but um, wait, I don't want to think about that. I realized also you were telling us the importance of this film to you when we cut for It doesn't matter. Chairs. God didn't want the audience to know. No, but what you said something that I didn't know, and I know this movie line by line. Yeah. I did not know there was a television show called the Finding, Finding the New L Woods. Which or it's what, like Finding L Woods. What was that for? It was literally on MTV and they had a bunch of Broadway girlies auditioning to be the new L Woods. For the Broadway play? Yes, for the show on Broadway. Okay. The, the girl who played it, oh my God, uh, Laura Bell Bundy. She, great name. That's Laura great Bell name. Bundy, she was the young girl at the beginning of Jumanji. Oh! So her and young Robin Williams are playing the game, and then she grows up to be oh. like the main woman. Oh, oh. she's not Whoa. Kristen Dunst. Oh, oh yeah. That just... But that's Laura Bell Bundy. <laughs> Laura Bell Bundy. <laughs> She's incredibly talented, but Laura she, Bell, she get back in here. <laughs> yeah, what's Laura doing? Bell Bundy. <laughs> she premiered the role on Broadway, and it's so oh. worth watching both the series, the show, and the movie. Is it is still on Broadway? Broadway? Still, is it still? It, on? It's been touring, I okay, think, yeah, off yeah. and on for like a very long time. Let's go see as a as a work field trip. Let's, let's go find see a musical. what town it's playing yes, in. Fly there. Fly to Cleveland. Yes. Go see the touring production mm -hmm. of Legally Blonde. I Blonde's. love that Hell so yeah. much. I'll go. <laughs> sure. What? Yeah, well, Garrett's certainly not invited. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm not in the podcast. No, you're in the podcast. <laughs> you're taking place of Garrick, our third host, yeah, who we're gonna... is at an award show tonight for his girlfriend, who has been a cast a guest on this show so many times, Sequoia B. Holmes, Way for her go. podcast, Black People Love Paramore. And we're just going to oh, go and pre preemptively congratulate Sequoia yes, on her win. Won. Yep. On Congrats. her win. I'm manifesting. And if she didn't, for shame. For shame. For shame. Legally Blonde. Tell us. Where do you want to begin? Give it, us the plot. People don't need it. You know what? I watched this with a person whose name you both will not say after I tell you who. Had never seen it before, and I watched it with him last night, and he fucking loved it. Your foreign boyfriend? God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my, it's, do both of you stop it? <laughs> <laughs> he's not my boyfriend, First and of his all, name's not He's just the, the hot man you sleep with who lives he's with you. He's known as the athlete. Cook, the athlete. Rainy, you better believe out what I'm saying his name. And he has an accent. Yeah. 
a, a big one, if you know what I mean. He lives with you. Uh -huh. He <laughs> travels with you. Uh -huh. You sleep together. Oh, yeah. He cooks for you. He has his own bedroom downstairs. How often mm. is he sleeping in that Every bed? night. I don't share that bed. Mm -mm. How often is he starting in yours? Mm. There's a week, okay. baby. Legally blonde. <laughs> But he loved it, so it stands. It does stand the test of time. Yeah, it is like it is a perfect movie. It, mm -hmm. it yeah, from title to script to acting to execution, it's perfect. Wait, can we actually? You are right. The title is perfect. perfect. Like that. If I get a script across my desk, I'm some fat cat executive wielding my cigar, and I see legally blonde. I'm like, oh yeah, sold. What does it mean? Okay, longest pause ever. What do you mean? What does it mean? <laughs> Is it a play on words? Well, she's going to law school, so she's pursuing like no. What do you mean? Is You're it asking a metaphor if it's a for direct legal, like pun. legally blind, legally blonde? Is it something like that? It just uh, you know I yeah why do we love it so much yeah because it sounds like a pun but i'm not sure that it I don't is think it is it's supposed to call up legally blind it i think is? is it that feels yeah, it's bl <laughs> blah wait why would it be legally blind but like but it's also like okay she's a blonde and she's like using her blondness i thought to kelsey law. was stupid and now i think we're stupid <laughs> no we're definitely not stupid <laughs> i'm a fat cat you're a fat kitten and she's stupid <laughs> <laughs> hurtful but i do i do agree i think the title's perfect there's nothing that comes across but i'm just wondering why we all were so in love with it i'm just here to question the man aka yeah. you man being a very generous term with you both thank you so much wow yeah i take I'm, that actually as a compliment yeah I uh it. legally blonde stars reese witherspoon <laughs> as l woods her long-term boyfriend gets into mm. harvard and Boy. says l you're not serious enough for me. You're I'm, stupid. You're stupid. And guess what? You dumped. So L, to prove him wrong, studies and studies, and she gets into Harvard to graduate as a lawyer to prove to her ex that she's got all that. She gets embroiled in a courtroom drama to uh, clear the name of mm -hmm. an idol of hers. Mm -hmm. Whose name I forget. Brooke. Brooke. Uh, Taylor. Brooke Taylor, who is- Windsor? A, it's Win Taylor. Windsor. That's the man's name. Mm. Oh, old but Habersworth. She's Windsor. also a legacy at the same sorority. Delta That's New. important. That's important. Sisters first, you yeah, know. Sisterhood of the traveling. Uh, she is accused of murdering her husband. Courtroom drama. Sparks flying. Will she get back with her ex? Or hey, who's this Luke Wilson fella? Oh my mm, god! Hubba, hubba. Mm. This is legally blonde. Talk about it. Okay, on the way over here, I was telling Zach, I was like, I'm actually very curious. Like, how does this movie sit with a straight man versus mm. like a gay man versus a queer girl? Like, what? How does it land for you in the zeitgeist of life? Uh, how does it land? I mean, I just remember I've seen this movie a ton. Mm -hmm. It is so funny. Mm -hmm. I, again, I say it from. There's that young boy perspective of, oh, I'm not supposed to like a movie like mm. this. And then you watch it and you're so, it's so transcendently good mm. that you just do love it. Yeah. Now, granted, I don't know that I am the best representative when it comes to gender norms and what people like and don't like, mm. but that that was my experience mm. with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just so funny. Do you feel like you can also quote it front to back? Yes. Okay. See, that's where I was like, that's what makes this a universally good movie. Like, we have Jennifer Coolidge. We have Luke Wilson. We have what's the big guy lo lawyer's uh, name? Oh, I love him. I can never remember. Oh, his name. oh, oh! He's gay. He's gay in real life. I'm pretty sure the one who tries to touch her, yeah, is pretty is gay. <laughs> Victor Garber. Oh, okay. Gay. You could be making all this up right now. Oh, you're talking like, about yeah. the uh, yeah, Victor Garber. Okay, Wait, the big here. the big lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's the bitch? The name. bitchy girl. Selma Blair. Selma Blair. Oh, I love That's Selma, Selma Blair. Blair. Yeah, of course. Yes. Oh my god. Cruel Intentions, Selma Blair. Yes, the Cruel Intentions. So hotty, so also, snotty. Also, um, Perm Girl is <gasps> Velma. Velma slash Dead to Me. Yes. Like, what a fucking career path she has been on. I think what this movie does so well, it does a lot of things well, but the reason why it's so enjoyable for everybody mm -hmm. is that it makes fun of the tropes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this movie is laughing at the dumb blonde, mm -hmm. but then the dumb blonde laughs at you. Mm -hmm. yes. And so it has its fun with the aesthetics and, and like, things that, that appeal to, I assume, right. you, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, mm -hmm. she has her 
fluffy pen and yeah, her little her convertible dog. and like all that all stuff. The cool iconic fashion moments. But it, it walks this really fine line of parodying it while also celebrating it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that's hard to do. What I loved rewatching it last night as now a 33 year old woman is I didn't realize back when I was 11 when this came out that I thought she was supposed to be dumb, right? You put her in today's age and she's not dumb. She's a fucking marketing fashion TikTok star. Oh, oh yeah. Like, she's an what? influencer. She's an influencer who runs <laughs> circles around you, does business like nobody else, fucking millions of dollars. Like even just listening back to it, she isn't dumb. No. She's upbeat. Like she's peppy and she likes to look pretty, which we then went, that's dumb. And mm-hmm. she has big boobs, not even fake tits. Like they're not rock hard. Like she could have had bad filler and rock hard titties and like a fake tan. They didn't really make her as dumb and blonde as she could have been. Sure. She, I think she was just really good at her job. Elle Woods is the original influencer. There you go. <gasps> she would put it. Charlie D'Amelio to shame. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. There is this girl on TikTok. I think her name is Julie Kay, and I follow her, and I love her, where she, like, does everything pink, and she's, like, an Amazon review girly, and she is basically the Elle Woods of TikTok generation, and she just bought a mansion in Florida, so, you know wow. what? Even the aesthetic's still alive. Elle's uh, uh, submission video to Harvard uh, would go so unbelievably viral. So hard. Oh, it really would. Right? Yeah. It would be like one of the few things that goes genuinely viral. Yeah. And did you know this was based on a book? What? I learned this yesterday. I have, I, I'm worried that you got something confused. I'm going to look it up to quadruple I, check, I'm but it was based on. I'm watching the opening credits and I'm not seeing based, based on, on the, the novel. novel. <laughs> Legally Blonde by Amanda Brown, a 2001 romantic comedy novel. Wow. wow. Yeah. I did not know that this was either. How rich is she? Do oh, you think girl. or do you think she got yes! kind of passed over? The intellectual property that is Legally Blonde. But don't, don't you think they just like licensed it out from her? Or bought the rights. Nah, I don't think maybe it, you 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 pull that trick once, but with red, white, and blue, she got her check. Yeah. The in the book, she goes to USC, but no, in the movie, she cool. goes to Harvard, C U L A. First, that's where she transfers from. UCLA. No, in the show, in the movie, it's called C U L A. Is it really? Yeah, because it's a play on UCLA. Wow. Um, she's a design major, is blonde, spoiled, and desperately in love with Warner Huntington Warner. III. But when Warner announces he's dumping her to go off to Stanford. <gasps> Stanford? Stanford! This is... Elle decides that a little thing like law school won't come between them. Anything Warner can do, she can do better. Elle's Stanford misadventures begins badly, and it seems the one place blondes definitely don't have more fun is in law school. But then Elle's asked to defend one-time fitness queen Brooke Vandermark on a murder charge. Seizing the opportunity to prove her worth to Warner and her fellow classmates, she vindicates all who are blonde at heart. Wait, Brooke why Wyndham, do, why do but I Taylor's wanna read, her maiden name. Why do I want to read this book now? I want to read that this. That sounds so fun. I yeah. ultimately just stop reading it and watch the movie. I know, but then <laughs> you can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Here's my hot take, though. Okay. Is I do think Elle Woods potentially could be canceled if she was, like, living <laughs> today. You know what I mean? Like, sorority is not cute really anymore. It's kind of culty. This is when, like, privilege was okay This is when privilege exhibit. was okay. Your wealth, your exuberant wealth, your well, fuzzy you, pens. And, and you could say the same about Cher in Clueless, right? Yeah, oh. Exactly. It didn't age well. I mean, it did. But, but. what's oh, interesting yeah. is they're both. <laughs> I just saw it for the first time. They are both very kind hearted characters. Mm-hmm. They're never going out of their way to make people feel bad. Mm-mm. They're like including everyone. Yeah. They just happen to be like privileged people. Hot take. Jennifer Coolidge is more the dumb blonde, quote unquote, in this movie than Elle. I, I agree. What is the purpose of Jennifer's character? I always wondered. Hilarious. Uh, hilarious. Well, and, and I mean, the mov- the script does a lot of. It's a very tried and true thing, but mm-hmm. you have your main character being nice to less well-off characters, uh, right? You have and changing their life for the and better. changing their life better. Mm. So you know she has this heart of gold, and she she gets this ragtag group, and through doing that, you show that she cares about the relationships and the people, and mm-hmm. it makes you love her. Even that's like I'll never forget the scene where. There's that quiet guy who's asking these yes. girls out on a date, and Elle just is like, I got this. She walks up to him, slaps, slaps him, him across yeah. the face. <laughs> Why did you goes, call me back? You give me the greatest pleasure of my life, life. and then don't call. 
I'm sorry. It's like, well, sorry for, me. yeah. And then, no, then she goes, sorry for what? For not giving calling me. or for giving me the greatest pleasure? I'm butchering yeah. the line, but God, it's so good. It's so good. She's really helping the people around her. Also, Jennifer Coolidge is, um, she has oracle qualities. And yes. she, meets, she meets her in like, common ground for her which is a beauty salon right. where she's about to make the bad decision of becoming a brunette and Jennifer Coolidge who has lived all these like tumultuous love lives like talks her off the ledge <gasps> the fact that you just went archetype and <sighs> called her the oracle and yeah. like you're bringing in like Dungeons and Dragons language <laughs> to Legally Blonde and that it makes so much sense hilarious. to me <laughs> Zach's gonna steal that now watch I'm gonna hear that again great every movie I'm gonna be like well that's the oracle there's the oracle <laughs> Wait, so in the in the Broadway show, she's going to dye her fucking hair brown? That's Isn't that the impetus in the movie, too? No, she goes to get a manicure. Oh, I thought she was going... Okay, in the Broadway musical, she's like, it's <gasps> time for me to go, Burnett. <gasps> you, we, we are listening to the soundtrack. On, do you know it? Uh, no, I've seen clips of it. Rainey's 13 to, years though, old, by the Broadway. way. She's so young, it hurts me every time I talk <laughs> about things. you got to treat yourself to some Legally Blonde, the musical on Spotify. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, on home, you from first listen, you'll be you'll be into it. And can I watch the, you said I can watch the whole musical I on, bet you could find it on like, YouTube.com. I won't Dot com. rip it. Yeah. Wow. Zach is 85 <laughs> years old. We've got a real age spectrum Is that spectrum the HTTP dot semicolon yes, yeah. slash, 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 slash www.youtube.com yeah. 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 backslash Search. Legally Blonde musical full pirated. Yes. Amazing. Dot vid. Dot. <laughs> uh, I know this is like what I'm about to say is obvious. Reese Witherspoon is a really great actress. <sighs> yeah, I want to actually go back to when you said this is what made her a star. Well, to, she's been. She's been. What? A star. She done been, really since a child. Like Out of Africa, I think was one of her first movies. Never heard of it. Uh, Election, Election was right before yeah. this. I, I think one. the run that she had with a couple years. She was in Alexander Payne's Election, which. That to me is still my favorite Reese performance. She's as a, a, a you know, something flick, uh, not oh, Wendy. Oh, Tracy uh, Flick. Trace, tr Tracy. Tracy Flick. Tracy Flick. That movie is so fucking oh, good. It's she is so this good. Insufferable we girl running it. for student body okay. president. And Matthew, Matthew Broderick, Broderick is the teacher that hates her. And just what? it's just like he he just hates this girl uh. because she just like wants to do good. She's Shut up. too much of a tryhard. And so he tries to thwart her. Are you kidding? It's perfect. That also, movie is there's a fallen leading man in that movie who does not make films anymore. But he was in Just Friends as like the hot guy with the guitar. Do you know what I'm talking about? I haven't seen it in oh, ages, like so I can't picture it. He's like the hot jock brother to the lesbian girl in election. It's it's not the dude who's American Pie who's running against her. I don't think so. Okay. Sorry, this is... Take We're all this out. Yeah, this no. happens um, all the time. No, are you kidding? <laughs> but I went to high school with Jessica Campbell, who was the lesbian who wanted to see if her pee smelled different if she ate asparagus. <laughs> I gotta watch this. Tonight. It's a great movie. Yeah. It's really excellent. I don't know. But, I've never even heard of it. No, I, I say this was her breakout because this is when she became a household star. That's there it fair. Is. Uh, and, and if you look at her run, it actually sort of reminds me of the run me? that Emma Stone had, yeah. where she went Easy from a. Easy A to La La Land Oscar, and Reese went from Legally Blonde within, I think, four years, she won the Oscar for Walk the Line. Whoa. Maybe four or five. Like it was a wow. pretty quick like ascension. Wow. And uh, and I, you know, now she's got her her book production clubs company. and her production company, Hello, and she's on you know all these TV shows. And I think it's easy to forget when stars are of that magnitude, just how good they are. Yeah. Especially then when it comes to a movie like this, which is like, oh yeah, no, it's like a comedy. It's like a rom com, right? It's fine. Very no, she stakes. is phenomenal. Yeah. In she this really movie. is. And she has a range of emotion in this. She yeah. does. Oh, my God. The scene of her crying when Warren breaks up with her of the squeals and the shakes and the. Yep. <laughs> to, make that to make that character not feel like a caricature. Yes. Where you are. I believe you in emotionally. I, uh -huh. I care about you. Yep. Mm -hmm. You are hilarious. Like pitch perfect funny. Mm -hmm. You are a comedian, but you're also playing this larger than life like archetype. It is. It's this. It's a, a high wire balancing act. She had that I, to believe that. Fully. Yeah, yeah. For that us I, I to think is it. very easy to take for granted when mm -hmm. you watch the movie. But no, that is this is quality acting, and the movie rests on the shoulders of someone like her being able to pull off that character, make you believe her, make you laugh at her, mm. make you root for her. Mm. Nailed it.
Wow. <laughs> well, that's the podcast, you guys. <laughs> How dare you think I would let us go through this whole podcast without talking about the outfits? Oh, do you love them? Are you kidding me? What I even realized last night watching it was like they muted everybody else as much as possible. Because yeah, they're boring law people. They look like those. Um, oh God, this is going to age me so deeply. And it pains me to say this. But do you remember those cutout dolls that had like the tabs the that you would switch dolls. outfits, yeah. the paper dolls? Oh, wow. Like, you grew you up on a farm? On the prairie? Yeah. <laughs> Is um, that before or after you were playing with the stick and the wheel? Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> um, we used the sun as a watch once upon a time. It the they I'm looked sure that was funnier so, back then. Yeah. They looked so chaotic compared to everybody else. Like it did the costuming did not make sense whatsoever when you put them against regular people, but it worked somehow. Like I was even noticing the way that they do the women's hair in this movie probably took like an hour and a half per, per woman. It is so teased. It is so rolled. You're talking Jennifer Coolidge? Her, the two sorority sisters. Oh. Even Reese, like when she has her big, big curls, I was like, women, we just don't do that anymore. We don't have the fucking time or patience. Like they blew these women up to look like women they curved their bodies they hide their heels at the sorority it's like you guys look like every single one of them looked like sorority girls and so when i think about what would that girl look like in law school mm -hmm. the first outfit you get is her with this dark crushed velvet green robe <laughs> with like with a little white feathers. flurry oh, her hair in a bun with the big thick rim glasses, oh, long good. blue skirt with high knee leather brown boots. And you're just like, what the fuck is she thinking? Like, what could she possibly? But she knows no other way. That was She's, her take on. Yes. On law student. That stuffy. was her dressing up. And as you watch her evolve, her outfits evolve, oh. even to when she's at the internship, she's wearing this more like black waist hugging with like a yeah, high would say they do devolve see it, it it evolved from chaotic part sparkly pink barbie to full law student until synthesis she gets the the final court moment when brooke hires her as her lawyer right and she walks into the courtroom and she's in a head-to-toe full pink suit Let's yeah go. and you're like she figured out the balance. She was trying to play a part the whole time she was at Harvard with her outfits. Right. But then once she realized like she could do her signature look and just be herself, that final outfit is like with the dog, with the purse. And she had this big oversized bag with the scarf tied around it. Like these were all iconic early aughts looks that I think even still today, like I still had like an oversized bag today for a meeting and I was like, oh, it's because I watched Legally Blonde Well, last these night. looks are coming back like as we of speak. Of course. Big sunglasses, scrunchies, like it is full, like full circle iconic moments. The costumer is listening somewhere and is going, <gasps> thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for understanding my methods. No, but 100%, I think you nailed it with the way that the costuming reflects her character. I mean, even with Selma Blair, like you look at her character, right? They started her with Argyle on Argyle. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. God, it was heinous to look at. But you're just like, yeah, this yeah. bitch has no fucking she clue. She exists. She has no idea what she's doing. And then by the time they become best friends in the end, her looks are a lot more digestible. It's very like, okay, Sandy from Greece. Are we familiar? Yes. Olivia Newton-John. It's like that trajectory. But instead of ending up as like, I have to be a slut and dress this way to get attention, she like reverts back to like what she knows what she knows mm -hmm. and like oh i can do this as myself mm -hmm. so i just really wanted to drag sandy first yeah i really that's all i heard was you hate women <laughs> yeah i hate women women of the 50s and slut shaming yes classic zach classic me um yeah, but i have a controversial question okay is warren warner won't see exactly God damn it put some respect on it warner is warner attractive he was then Oh, interesting. He was extremely attractive then. He was. <sighs> I wouldn't Google image him now, but he was attractive then. Oh, so I'm like when you watch what the movie, you're oh, like, yeah, my. it's a hottie bobby. As like a young boy, yeah, he made some appearances in, <laughs> in the in the late night <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm looking him up. Warner? 
Matthew Davis. Uh, to me, he looks like a bird. What? Yeah. Big bird, maybe. Uh, oh. I mean, he certainly he lacks... actually aged quite nicely. Damn Good right. for him. Yeah. He was tall. He was square jawed. He was like very, He's he looks like a Ken doll. And that's exactly what he was supposed to be. Okay. He's classic, but he's boring. And then you you you, you have the charm of Mr. Luke Wilson. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Not enough movies. I miss you, Luke. The best. I know. Owen needs to, if Owen, Owen needs to pause and let Luke. Or maybe they could just both. I guess. Have they ever but, done anything together? What are you talking yes. about? What are you talking about? You have a movie podcast. You, Kelsey, <laughs> you're gonna. I barely. <laughs> I'm gonna hide. Their whole car- beginning of their career was together. We're doing what? Name one. B- Bottle, Bottle Rocket, Rocket Never was heard of the it. first movie that that they co-wrote with. I don't like the Zach sitting on that side ganging up on me. This feels this feels sexist. They were both in the Royal Tenenbaums. Sexist or oh, okay. sexy? That's fair. And you're right. It is sexy. I like being yelled at. Go on. They were both in. Those are actually Bottle Rocket. I just knew Bottle Rocket as like the that launched them. That's where the Wilsons came from. Okay, there was the a very, brothers Wilson. There's a very funny joke in the movie where Elle's getting out of his car and she's talking about her hair, and he's like, "Hey, would I look good as a blonde?" And I laughed because I was like, "Ah, that's just your brother." <laughs> and she goes, "I don't think you could handle it." <laughs> Wink, walks away, and I'm like, "What?" I never really. I connected those I two don't thoughts. Think that's meant oh. to be a joke from the movie, but I like it now that Are it plays as twins? such. Are they not twins? They're not twins. No. They're brothers. Oh, they're not twins. They're not twins. They're just brothers. Strong genes. What? Wow. I actually don't think they look very similar. Wow. Have you ever looked at pictures of them? No. Well, now I have a lot of things to Google. Also, just so you know, Matthew Matt Davis, the actor who was Warner, is forty five and lives in Salt Lake City now. But he was in the Vampire Diaries. <gasps> From 2009 to 2017. <laughs> okay, she watched it from the cradle. As Rainy, well as Rainy a spinoff like, series. Oh, ah! You're watching it right started. now. I just started. I just started and I love it so much. I'm so excited. After this, I'm going to go watch the it. The two main guys are so hot. Uh, like, I so He was also brothers, in the spinoff Legacies. In, in, the in the show. In the show. Until 2022. So he's like still around and still acting very much a lot. Just living his Mormon life in Salt Lake City. He better not. And guess what, Kelsey? Hmm. He was gonna. He wanted to give you a call, and now he said no because he heard what you said on the podcast. I think it, they gave him a look of a bird. What you can't give someone the look of a bird unless you're, you cover them in feathers. You're born with it. Yeah, you're either born with it, honey. <laughs> it's or, it's no. giving bird like quality. Like part? he looks very fragile. What? And what animal do you think you're giving? Raccoon. <gasps> <laughs> I'm okay. a raccoon. If you fuck with me, I'll bite you and give you rabies. Well, you also eat yeah. food out of the garbage. I did this weekend. Don't judge me. <laughs> I believe you're eating Skittles and corn nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving raccoon. Uh, we talked about Jennifer Coolidge. Uh, mm. oh. who, it's so nice now that like b- because things have gone full circle. I'm like, great. She's gotten hers. She got every award under the sun for White Lotus. And now we can just look back and go. Enjoy her. Wow. What a mm. what a wonderful time we had with you, Jennifer. It was kind okay, of weird Kermit's to in the hear. <laughs> it was kind of weird to hear like some of her voice without like an accent attached a little bit. Like it it dipped in and out with that character, and I was like, oh. I heard it the whole time. Okay, well, we're talking about like quotes that you just quote. I the, the I'm taking the dog, I dumbass. Will, <laughs> I will say that. Without realizing I'm quoting Legally Blonde. Totally. Like, I'm just like, I'll leave the house. And Maggie's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm, I'm taking, taking the, the dog. dog. <laughs> Dumbass. And it's just like, what? What am I doing? Yeah. This movie has just made its way into uh, daily life for yeah. me. Um, we we opened the, the movie with it, but. I say um, happy people just don't kill their husbands a yeah. lot. And out of context. Hard. And happy people don't kill their husbands. They just don't. It's just a good. It's, it's just a so great many line. good. What? Like, it's hard. I do love the Jennifer Coolidge of it all. Yeah. It's nice. I, gay men, I, do you guys like character actresses? Love. Uh, okay. It, that, so that's universal. That's just I, not gay. I, I, yes, gay men love But I think more. gay men most of all. Hold it. I think we relate because it's like a uh, sidekick energy uh-huh. and gay men are usually sidekicks and oh, things. Oh, really? For sure. I feel like you're sidekick. You are. But like, <sighs> that's like, we're it's 2024. We're doing yeah, something okay, different. We're flipping it. Yeah. Okay. Can I bring out the one? I'm not going to say guilt of this movie, but question. And it okay. involves our girl. Okay. Oh, God. I'm, I'm just kind of scared Coolidge? to say this. Yeah. You don't have I feel to say like it. people are going to come for me. <laughs> I could not, but I've walked this far. I got to jump off the We could read you your Miranda rights. We before. could try. 
Um, You're the right term in Thailand. <laughs> you know, the, you know, talking's an option always. <laughs> yeah, but not talking. Have you ever known me to do so? No, exactly. No. The bend and snap. I, I yeah. was going to ask you questions about the bend and snap. Okay. It's not that I don't love this weird sort of semi-musical number in the middle of a very... I actually forgot about it until just now. ...non-musical yeah. show, but maybe this is what inspired the musical to go, so I'm grateful for it. But why does the snap... <laughs> Put your T-Rex arms... Put your T-Rex arms up! I think it's supposed yeah. to be like... Bend I think women do and snap. maybe put their... Like pu push their boobs up and why like kind of on the set. Why under the armpits? Because it's hot, Kelsey. Why not you bend under the boobs? And you snap. They snap. No, they go under their armpits. They do not go under their titties. They go like, like M dog begging. Men are very simple creatures. We see the bend. We see the snap. Yeah, awuga. I, I also think it was something that probably started very harmless and then it picked up speed and then it became a caricature of itself. Okay, so do like how a choreographer do you guys got feel? their hands on it and yeah. they're like, it's actually this. Okay. Sorry, and do why you not, are we snapping? Do you, not, do you not think that the bend and snap is hot and effective? I just don't know anyone that has ever bent like that. Like when I drop something in public, I'm like, God. Damn it, I got to bend over in front of people. There's no hot I way. You're, you're, telling me, you're telling me that if I bend and snap right now, you don't think that's going to get the people going. <laughs> I'll get going for you. <laughs> and quit going out the door. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, you get going pretty easily. I do anything. think it's supposed to be like, look at my look at my ass. Like, mount me look, maybe. Here we go. And then you. Oh, we're getting a live demonstration. So, okay, here we go. So you, have, you drop something. Oh. And you go, oh, my goodness. You slowly... Bend. Oh, you look like you have a hurt back. Uh, he's I unfortunately do. Zach's not doing it right. <laughs> you bend. Why do you're you look showing like the booty? Yeah, you are showing the booty. Okay. You're showing the booty. Okay. Maybe on your way down, they get a little peek through <gasps> at the shirt. Okay. Showing the booty. Bent down. We're Kate taking notes. Well, now this is a problem because they can't be looking at the booty and the chest at the same time. <laughs> well, great, both angles. That's a great point. Maybe there's a mirror. <laughs> Let me set my mirror up before There's, I pick this. We are in a salon. Wrap her up. So now I have this and they go, oh, oh, she's down. And then snap. Are you okay? Yeah. If someone stood up that fast, <laughs> I would think that they got scared yeah. or something. Or like my throw And then throw they up. go, oh. And I think it it shocks you and okay. titillates. Got it. That moment always throws me and I love it, but I'm always like, why that choice? Um, <laughs> I actually, you are awakening this memory of like, me not loving that yeah. aspect of it. And I n did she teach Jennifer Coolidge? Or yes. Jennifer she taught okay, the whole okay, thing. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You're not loving it as, well, first of all, obviously it's, it's silly, but you're telling me that you didn't love that scene? The whole movie is perfect. There is not an unnecessary, unnecessary part in the whole movie. Okay, then also I didn't like, as a gay man, the gay hair stylist going, works every time. Oh, the bend and snap. He's like, classic. He's like, he's the only one with filler. <laughs> like, I he was ahead that, of his yeah, fucking time. Totally. His, his Botox and his lips are huge. Mm. And it looked, I was like, oh, that's bend what this and is. Snap. Works every, every time. time. That's classic. I, I just, I hope that there are people out there listening who tried it. And people were looking at them like, the fuck are you That's doing? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, it, I'd rather drop into a molasana, like, full, wide, giving birth squat than try and bend and snap. Actually, mm. a squat's kind of hot, too. If you keep your back, like, straight and you, like, <sighs> squat down to grab the thing. And you make eye, eye contact and just lock eyes with someone the yeah, whole time. Yeah, and you just, like, Giving Christina there. Aguilera dirty. And then you kind of bounce a little bit. Oh. And then you pick up your pen and go, oops, <laughs> oops. I dropped this. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. And then <laughs> smack the UPS guy in the nose and break it. Such a great meat cute, though. It makes so much sense for this movie. No, I think it fit. Oh, so now you love it. No, it, I liked that moment. Oh, so you I didn't like it. the music video. So you do like the bend and snap. Do you hear this? This ganging up on me. <laughs> Have you guys done the sweetest thing on this pod? Or haven't? You guys got to do the sweetest no, thing. We guys got to do the sweetest. <laughs> thing. But there's a musical number in the middle of it. Wait, have you you haven't seen this? Um, Cameron Diaz, <gasps> Selma Blair, Christina Applegate. Oh my god! They go on a road trip to get a guy that one of them met briefly at a club. But so, they're notorious party girls who are like, we don't we don't do relationships, we don't do guys. But she's like, I kind of like this guy. He's like, then let's go find him. It's giving um, crossroads. I'm such a sucker for a comedy courtroom. 
Ugh. Every time. Like this, my cousin Vinny, I can't name a third. But that's, I know, I was just thinking, I was like, <laughs> but, how many, I couldn't mean the name of the first. that's two for two, and I like them both. Wait, there's I gotta be a another. I would watch an entire movie of this being a court case, by yeah. the way. It's I, I would watch so a mini funny. series. Yeah. Oh, of the murder? First of all, Brooke Taylor's two Dior outfits. First, the newspaper blazer. The audacity that woman has to wear a newspaper blazer. Yeah. When she's being charged with a crime. She, it was almost like her commentary, so like, good. do it, write about me. And then she wears a Jean Dior halter top in the court of law. The girl being charged? Yes. That's played by Allie Larder, Incredible. who was a big part of my youth. Uh, was she at all? You're awakening? Queen, right? Final Destination girl. Yes. And then she stole Beyonce's baby, I think. Found a what? station two or? One. One, okay. Uh, Obsessed. Dude, that movie is, oh, you guys feels watch like a that fever too. dream. Beyonce and her husband are stalked by Ali Larder. <gasps> who's, who's like trying like, to replace I'm gonna fuck your her. husband. What? Yeah. Yes. Was it like an MTV movie? No, nope, no, I'm thinking of major... Carmen the Hip Opera. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of those was in theaters? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, no, but it's uh, it's yeah. Major motion picture. Obsessed. She where did she go? She's great. She's probably still she's doing shit. Spinner. She's around. She's like a western of some sort. Not yeah. too long ago. It's great. Beyonce had some uh, some Fashionable movie acting. flops. Yeah. But then she was in Austin Powers three, and that saved everything. Turned that whole career right around. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. I think she's gonna I hear be she's okay. She's doing okay now. Yeah. Oh. We have to talk about how smart the writing of the court is because I think it's actually just a very good reveal as a court drama. Of, like the perm thing? Yes, the it, perm. Full gasp from me. Because guess what? Lawyers wouldn't know that. They wouldn't think to check that. That's why it is important to have women in your law firm or gay men. Um, but... Works was, every time. Oh, I thought of another line I like. What? Why now? Why these sperm? <laughs> <laughs> brain blast from that <laughs> but um the reveal of well there's two reveals that that l really cracks right the first that we quoted is don't you stomp your your last season prada boots at me honey and she goes that's a gay Isn't man last season uh and, oh another line i love is quick what warner what type, type of shoes are these uh, uh brown black ones. ones yeah <laughs> yeah like, fuck, it's so good and oh my god the, those designers Game when do. when he tricks the gay guy into saying he's just a friend he stands up and says, you, you bitch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i thought guy, you were saying chuck just that a friend. gay chuck guy just a friend. can stay yeah I that was a good one. moment oh but that made me wonder last night does that happen in court a lot have you ever heard a confession happen live in a courtroom? I think people trip over their stories for yeah. sure. It's definitely happened. Really? I'd like to see more. And your boyfriend's name is Chuck. Chuck. Oh, <gasps> I mean, my a friend. friend. My Chuck. friend Chuck is just you a friend. Bitch. <laughs> you bitch. bitch. Ugh, so good. Oh, my God. So there's oh that, God. that first revelation, yeah. which big bombshell moment. Yeah. But then the big one is finding out that the stepdaughter... Uh, was the one that killed her. And the way that she cracks the case is by using her knowledge of perms and post-perm process, yes. which when I watched this movie, and honestly, frankly, still to this day, I was like, I don't even know what a perm is. This woman's magical. I don't know why <laughs> it's women short for intentionally... Permanently. Is it? I think so. Is it? We think so. I don't, don't think people Google get it. perms anymore. <laughs> they get perms. Episode. Eugene got a perm. Oh, what? perms are still happening for sure. What? It's like a permanent wave. It's permanent, cur like, yeah, waves. It's just like you, it's like a whole day process or multi hour process, and you just like get waves. The thermio high glycolate has to set. And it like lasts and for you're a month not or two or something. To get it wet. I love that she's like, you were in the shower, and the judge, she's like, I think we've established exactly. she was in the shower. You And you didn't hear the gunshot because you were in, in the, the shower. shower. <laughs> Where you got in the shower. Um, which was a very funny confessional reveal of Velma saying, I wasn't trying to kill my dad. I was trying to kill you. I thought it was you that walked through the door pointing at Brooke Taylor. I thought it was you. So then she just confesses to attempted murder also. God, every time I get called in for fucking jury duty, it's like been. someone didn't pay his t parking tickets. And like, I want to be on this. I want to be on the, the juicy, juicy murder case. I'm going to say something controversial. 
I think I would choose to watch the musical <gasps> over the movie. Really? It's that fun. The okay, songs, I need to watch this musical. Yeah, the tonight. songs are that good. I really try to look, and I hope it's good quality, but try to look for the MTV Presents Legally Blonde. Okay. Because they did like a professional taping of the Broadway like show. Like Hamilton. Girl, there's a quick change in the opening number. Shut Where up. she finds the perfect dress. <gasps> and then they go, they gather around her and then she steps out and she's in this like pink hot number. I would die. Oh, uh, well, there's another quick change. This is boring, isn't it? No. Where one of the sorority girls jumps down like a fire pole. What? And she quick changes <gasps> on the way down. That's impossible. It's so good. Why is there a fire pole in the sorority house? No, they don't really explain that. <laughs> but <laughs> Y'all ready for some fun facts? Oh, I'm ready. We got some me. good ones. Uh, first of all, Reese Witherspoon, ever the, uh, 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 what's the word? Ingenue? Thank you. Is it? No. Oh, okay. fuck. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but she's she she's smart. She's a smart cookie, and she put something in her contract. And what did she put in her contract? That she got to keep all the costumes oh. after filming. Ah, oh. wow! I love. I fucking love it. You have to go home with all of those. I was on forty-two episodes of a television show with this man sitting right here. I stole all those clothes. I got a lot of them too. I don't know if it was above board, but I got I them. Definitely stole them. I w yeah. Okay, go on. We just incriminate ourselves for no reason. I don't care. Reason. They're not bringing us back for a season three. I don't give a shit. So Reese Witherspoon wanted to really study up for her role. So she spent two weeks studying the behavior of sorority girls. Uh, uh, she did not want to. I thought you were going to say lawyers. Well, yeah, there was like a zoo exhibit <laughs> where you could go watch sorority girls behind Giving glass. Games. Yeah, that would be. I would watch it. That would make so much money. Yeah. Uh, uh, she didn't want to portray your typical airhead sorority girl. Uh, she said on the commentary that they were all very kind and polite. She enjoyed her time. She also went, uh, she watched women shopping at Neiman Marcus. Did she go look at like University of Alabama or somewhere she's from? I no, bet. Probably. Mm. And then she also went to law school for a day. How do a you, day? <laughs> how do you not watch people at Neiman Marcus? If you go to Neiman Marcus. Also, I can't believe she went for two weeks to a sorority as if the law school being a day wasn't the thing she should have spent more time studying. No, she had to get the character, the character. And then the character goes on the journey. Okay. Sure. Uh, uh, Bruiser, the <gasps> Chihuahua, was named Mooney. Mooney? Mooney. That's and cute for name. all we know, he's still alive. Honey. He passed, For all we know. He passed away. No! <laughs> March 10th, 2016. Oh, oh he still uh, lived a bit. It was at the the Trump. Damn. <laughs> Wait, this was made in 2001. How is that possible? That dog was 18 years old. Holy little shit. Little dogs, little dogs Chihuahuas, can last. Chihuahuas live fucking forever. Holy shit. They're, They're like, like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> shit will live 100 years if okay. you let it. Uh, there, this is huge for me on a personal level. And I'm hoping, Zach, that you're going to have my back here because I know this one cannot oh. be trusted. Okay. Uh, producer Mark Platt. Ben Platt's dad. Oh. Is that the, that's the surprise? No. Oh, okay. But he produced this movie. Yeah. He also produced another movie. There's a comment, a line that Elle says, and I like my little, my little antenna went up. She said, quote, whoever said orange is the new pink is seriously Usually disturbed. disturbed. That line is a reference to his other produced film, Josie and the Pussycats. Oh. Let's fucking go. Have you guys done that yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Zach's favorite so, movie. Is it really? Parker Posey. Yeah, she's the best. Oh my God. And Kelsey so didn't get good. it. And you know what? We, we don't get her. Fight. Why do you hate women? <laughs> okay, there's I hate even, Zach. There's let's be clear. even songs that I had on mix CDs from Josie and the Pussycats. This, uh, Those three. Small words. Can you stay? We're way oh, too God. I hate it when this happens. Dun, dun, I introduce dun, dun, my best friends to people all the time, and then they always dun, fucking dun, take them. Dun, this dun, happens dun, all the dun, time to me. Those... All right, enough. <laughs> okay, and now she's homophobic. Uh, so the confrontation with Warner, uh, nor the final graduation scene, were originally part of the script. Uh, the movie tested. You know, they do audience testing, and audiences were so wrapped up by Elle's story. And they got disappointed that she never got her revenge on Warner. They wanted to know what happens. Did, nice. what is she, does she become a lawyer? What ha so they they had to add those. That's like that's interesting to me because in like this like I do think it's a really close to perfect script. 
you need the to thing. Close it. Yeah, that started her journey. She I entered agree. the world because of this man. She was trying to win him back. Yeah. And I was looking for it last night. Like, when was the switch that she decided she's not gonna go for him anymore? Oh, that's interesting. And it was I think it was when Homegirl Selma Blair comes into her room. And, and is mean to and her? Is, no, no, no. And they become friends. They oh, become oh, like oh. friendly. And then she's like, yeah, I kind of feel bad for her actually. And then she realizes like, oh, this poor girl is going to be going through exactly what I went through. Because I was looking for that resolve too. I couldn't believe that they wouldn't have put that in there. Yeah. Should we watch the second one? Yeah. There's a second one? Red, white, and blonde. Makes me want to eat a hot dog real bad. That's from that one? What? I yeah. know that line. It's like the 4th of July. I Makes thought that was from eat a hot dog White real bad. Lotus or something. <laughs> wow. Uh, Wait, I want to watch the second one. I actually, that I, I saw it once in theaters and never felt compelled to watch it again. Huh. But it's also really hard. It's like Miss Congeniality 2. Like you cannot beat Miss Congeniality 1. It's so original classic. It's just so good. I got to look it up and make sure I haven't seen it. Uh, we're not gonna, you know, look. This is a this is a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm not even gonna play that game. No. We're in our pleasure era here. We're just having pleasures. This movie's yeah. wonderful. P- p- it, Classic. W- wait, would Rick say something like? No, he would. He aggrav- would. Okay, okay. You yeah, don't yeah. aggravate. I feel like he might give it a guilty pleasure. Nah, that's we, insane. Do you think I should try to just face him real fast? The and world. Ask? Has said it's a pleasure. The, I think Zach, you nailed it. You like gave me such an aha moment in Both the beginning of, when one? you said you Zach, Hell believe yeah. it or not, when you said like <laughs> because of what the content's about, we're made to think it should be a bad dumb girl. Yeah. It could have been. I think it could have missed the mark in a, a, a variety of ways. Mm-hmm. If it didn't have Reese Witherspoon or the supporting cast, if it wasn't the directed the director. Do you think Legally Blonde is a guilty pleasure, a pleasure, just plain guilty? I'll text you. Congrats. We hope you win. We love you. <laughs> okay, really fucked up him to answer during the award show. But she was there too. They both were in frame saying hi. Okay. He said, a classic. Taught me about the law. And for some reason, all of this is in caps. Yeah. And that means he's emphatic about oh, it. Oh, they're rolling. He said he was gay in all caps. <laughs> My Pleasures is a segment of the show where we say something we've been watching, enjoying, reading, writing. Oh. oh. That doesn't have to be a movie, a TV show. Oh. Yeah, it can be anything you want it to be. be. It can be. I just (laughs) finished, Rainy, I feel like, well, I don't know if you'd like We need a theme song. My Pleasures. My Pleasures. My, 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 my my Pleasures. I think we just made it. Um, I don't know if you, I feel like maybe you'd like this. But I have been obsessed with the author Dolly Adderton, who is a British girlie. She uh, was a writer for a bunch of like magazines and and news articles. She started writing her own novels, but her memoir is Everything I Know About Love. Oh, if I could have read this book 10 years ago. Caitlin is reading it. She loves it. Oh, it just. Wait, why? The way Zachary, why ten years ago that she talks about being in your twenties as a woman, and like all the mistakes she made, oh. and watches the growth of herself. There's this one line that, like, oh my god, I'll never forget. It was like talking about how much she drank and like blacked out in her twenties, and she was like, "When you spend so much of your twenties doing unserious, shameful things." You have a very hard time being a grown up that trusts themselves. Mm. Oh, you like to that. never learn to oh, trust yourself. Hard. And I was like, that's why I still feel this way because I did so. Like, I don't feel like I deserve to be in this position almost. Like, I but don't you were have successful the memory. As like a wasted person. <laughs> yeah. But dude, just the way she writes about heartbreak and female friendships and like, I wish I could read it again, and I wish I would have read it 10 years ago when I was in my 20s. So please, if that sounds identifying to you, go read Dolly Alderton's Everything I Know About Love. And then she just came out with her new book called Good Materials, which is about a breakup from a man's point of view, and it's a novel, and it's very good, too. Hell yeah. Yeah. How dare she write from a man's perspective? You should read it. (laughs) <laughs> it's appropriation. Wow. Uh, Zach, what are you enjoying Well, piggybacking right now? on that, and this is very selfish. You can't but read. I can't read, but I'm learning good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, this, <laughs> I've been working on like several uh, uh, book uh, 
proposals. Proposals. And um, I've landed on one about sobriety and like my <gasps> journey with getting sober i think it's going to be called magic medicine misery because that's like the 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 path most addicts face at first their use is magical then it's just medicine and then it's misery love and so it's like definitely a departure like it's very dark and funny but like Mm. i'm excited i like but i'm like you know i'm excited about it right now so the your pleasures is yourself a book that you haven't written yet (laughs) yeah i just think it's gonna change a lot of lives i love that for us zachary Oh man, Other, Zachary too. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a fashion pleasure. Oh, just for the that. fellas out there, oh, all or right. for the or for the ladies who want to shop for your fellas. Okay, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna. This is a bold statement. I'm gonna say it. Abercrombie is back. Oh my oh! god, I can actually second this. I got a secondhand <laughs> shirt. It is a gray shirt, very plain, with a sequined red heart. <gasps> that when you flip it, it's a rainbow heart. Wow. That's so funny. I'm like, this is not the store that bullied me throughout my adolescence. <laughs> this is a supportive, loving store now. Garrick was wearing an Abercrombie jacket last time. I recorded. actually like. I'm so. I actually wanted to take this out because I feel like I don't know that I'm ready to share this with the world. You yet. don't take it out. They're 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 coming back. It's annoying. Oh Zach, where can the people find you? Oh, at Zach Newey Towers on everything. And Tell them about your live oh my show. God. Also, so I have a podcast on Sirius XM called After Hours. It's with Netflix, and we're doing a live version of the show at Dynasty Typewriter on May 2nd for the opening night of Netflix is a Joke Festival. Oh, hell yeah. And it's so funny. His Kelsey's show is so funny. come to both of them. It's like yeah. a gamified sex talk show. Yeah. Zach, thank you so much for joining. Yay. Thanks for having me. We're going to have you back. Uh-huh.